When I started with post-processing, it was already very familiar with Photoshop. Nowadays, Photoshop is becoming less popular because it has moved to a subscription model, and then what they do is, uh, over the years, they raise the price of the subscription. So now it's up to uh, something like over 20 US dollars per month. And over time, that adds up to a lot of money. So there's another program I just released a video on called Affinity, which is a Photoshop alternative. So I'm interested in that, but I'm also interested in just like trying any new software. Um, another one that really has gotten much better since I started YouTube is called Cyril, S-I-R-I-L. And so I've made a number of tutorials about that. And that one is a little bit more similar to PixInsight, but a lot of people find it easier than PixInsight to learn because there's just not so much stuff as in PixInsight. It's a little bit more limited, but it still has a lot of the good tools you would need for a beginner. My workflow changes um, for m different kinds of images, but a simple workflow for uh, Cyril, if I was just using a one-shot color camera, like the ASI 2600 MC, um, would be to just take uh, lights, darks, flats, and bias and run Cyril's uh, OSC pre-processing script. So it just takes everything and it does all the pre-processing. So it does calibration, registration, stacking. And so then you have your um, final master image. And then I just run um, a gradient removal on that. So even if you don't have much light pollution, there's usually some amount of gradient from just the sky brightness changes because the sky is always darkest at the zenith and then as you get closer to the horizon, it gets brighter. So you wanna do some gradient uh, removal, background removal. And then I do a color calibration and then I do uh, a stretching, but I usually do with nebula shots at least, I do stretching in this particular way where I um, run Starnet within Cyril, and then there's this little option in Starnet that you check on called Star Recomposition. And when you do that, it separates it out into two uh, sections, the stars and the nebula, and you can stretch them separately. I can, I can stretch them separately, and after I've done stretching, Usually all that's left is just like a little bit of a saturation boost, and that's just a very simple color workflow um, that works well for any time you're not using a filter, but just a color camera and just want uh, a nice image, but with very few steps. So again, it was just OSC pre-processing script, background removal, color calibration, star net, and stretch, and then done. It really depends on the person. So some people, um, I think they would be best starting with a smart telescope like the C-Star because that product um, is very simple to use and it, it guides you through everything very easily and then it even does the stacking um, on the device so you have a stacked picture on your phone. Um, for other people, like if you have a photography background, um, I would just start by going out and trying to take like a single in-focus picture and don't worry about trying to get to the final picture, the finished picture you want your first night or your second night. You have to accept that astrophotography, you'll have to learn some things before you can get to this picture that you really want. And so um, it can take several nights of actually setting up and trying things out and learning them before you can get to that uh, night where everything goes right and you have really good uh, data that you can process.